Hi everybody, it's Tanya Hertz here and I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about organizational commitment and how we can keep our, our employees committed to working with us, committed to staying in the organization and thereby redu reducing uh, the turnover in an organization, uh, particularly uh, that uh, voluntary turnover in the organization. So start by considering um, or imagining that you have worked with a company for five years. You are um, you're a, fi a five-year employee, you've been at the company, and you've been approached by the competitors. And um, I want you to think about what you would, first of all, think about what you would do. And I, I, I'd like you to um, think about what you would, uh, the reasons why you might stay, right? What would cause you to say no to that competitor and stick around with, um, with that organization that you've been with for five years? Why not leave, right? Uh, now imagine this, imagine that that competitor has offered you a little bit more money, okay? Let's say um, you're an, on an hourly rate, you're making 1880 an hour and uh, the competitor comes in and offers you 20 to 50 an hour. What might cause you to stay? Okay, keep that in mind as we go through the different slides. So uh, what we're talking about here is commitment and uh, commitment um, basically means anytime the employee decides to stay at an organization and remain a part of the organization rather than, than leaving. And there are three primary types of organizational commitment. There is effective, continuance, and normative commitment. So employees are uh, we, we want our employees to maintain uh, that commitment to, to, to stay with the organization, but when they don't and they, um, they leave the organization or uh, exhibit any behavior that, that removes them from the organization, we call that a withdrawal behavior. <clears throat> and that can be physical or it can be psychological, but it's any action to help the employee remove themselves from work. So let's start with effective commitment. So effective commitment is essentially commitment on the part of the organ, uh, employee rather, um, because of an emotional attachment uh, to the organization and to the people in that organization and involvement with the organization. So effective commitment is staying with the company because you want to stay with the company. You like being with the company. And employees that have a high level of effective uh, commitment um, they want to be there, they like being there, and they very often won't leave to avoid feeling um, sadness, right? So imagine you leave a company you like. How do you feel? Well, you might feel a little um, unhappy, a little sad, right? So research shows that people with effective uh, commitment, high levels of effective commitment, they tend to engage in a lot more interpersonal uh, and organizational uh, citizenship behaviors. So remember we talked about that last um, section? They um, are better helpers, they're more sportsmanlike, and they engage in higher levels of boosterism. Remember, boosterism is saying positive things about the company when we're not at work, right? And here's a little, uh, a little scale uh, or survey rather that we'll do. And uh, just so you know, um, when you do these, um, these uh, surveys, any item that's in bold is uh, something that uh, we should actually reverse that Likert scale. So um, this is a Likert scale. Likerts go from uh, strongly agree to strongly disagree. And uh, the reason why we've, we've bolded this is we wanna keep it kind of challenging. We don't want people to kind of understand exactly wh where the questions are going. So uh, rather than, um, rather than doing these surveys, uh, each question individually and then reversing the scale for you, we ask you to do it. So uh, let's go to number three. I do not feel like part of a family at the organization. Now, um, uh, when you're doing this survey, it's a good idea to do it as if you, uh, as if you are um, with an organization right now. And if you don't have a job right now, at least uh, you know imagine it for maybe your school or something like that uh, so that you can answer the question. So. Number three, I do not feel like part of the family at your, at your organization. So if you strongly agree with that statement, normally you would put a one, but because it's bolded, you reverse the scale so it would be five, right? Um, oh, sorry, strongly agree, you would put a five. I said that backwards, I probably confused the issue even more. Uh, yeah, so sorry about that. 
um, you're reversing the scale. If you strongly agreed, you would put a one, not a five. Sorry, I hope I didn't confuse you there. Um, when you're all told done with this, um, with the uh, survey, I would uh, like you to add up all of the numbers and, and see where you where you land. Uh, people with high levels of organizational commitment uh, would score typically at uh, a 20 or higher. And there are much more um, expansive uh, organizational commitment surveys that you can get online that you can actually give to your employees to see how committed they are, especially with effective commitment. So effective commitment, it's influenced by a number of things, but one of the primary influencers of effective commitment is bonding. So bonding is, um, is our, uh, the attachment that we feel to others in the organization. And the erosion model states that employees who have less bonds are more likely to leave or quit the organization. And the social influencer model says that employees who have direct linkages or ties with people who leave the organizations are more likely to leave the organization themselves. And this is important because uh, we have to think about things like when we're terminating an employee, how well liked is that employee? Or it's particularly relevant right now in social times of social distancing. Bonds are formed when people spend time together, particularly when they spend time together on challenging or unique problems or situations. Um, that's why it's a good idea to go on date night with your spouse and, and to go to a, a place that you've never been before and to see and do things that you've never done. Those all, that all facilitates or encourages bonding. Um, this is why companies spend money on things like company parties. You know, company parties don't have any direct impact on your bottom line, but if you care about your bottom line, you better spend money on company parties or else what will happen is employees will not feel connected to the organization. They won't be able to form bonds with their, uh, with their uh, colleagues or cohorts and then what ends up happening is they leave, right, when a better offer comes along. <coughs> so let's um, take a look at this um, uh, under the... Uh, understanding of the erosion model. So remember, the erosion model states that people who have fewer bonds are more likely to leave the organization. That said, who's going to leave? Look at this. Look at this. Who's going to leave? Who do you think will leave? Is it uh, the 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 blue people with pants on or the red people with skirts on? A and which of those people? Well, I think that you can see pretty easily this guy is the most likely to leave the organization. The most likely to leave the organization followed by this guy, and then so on and so forth. So I'd also like you to look at, um, look at this uh, chart in terms of the social influence model. Under that model, let's imagine this fella here, or female or whoever it is, this person in blue leaves, what's gonna happen? Who do you think might also leave? Well, you better believe that this guy's out the door, right? And, and in, uh, any number of others. Uh, we've seen this time and again, I've had this in organizations where, uh, or I've worked in organizations where they didn't think about this before they've let people go, and it can cause all sorts of problems. I saw it in Coldwell Banker when I worked 25 years ago, where they let go one of the managers who was really popular, and they lost half of their, their workforce as a result. So the continuance, uh, continuance commitment is the desire on the part of the employee to stay with the organization because of an awareness of the costs associated with leaving, Right, so staying at a company because of the costs, financial costs, um, the the need to be there. So, continuance commitment is something that we can affect or gets affected by the investment that the employee has in the organization. Right, the time um, that they have. Uh, uh, you see high levels of continuance commitment whenever the economy is bad. Right, uh, if there's nowhere else to go. People are going to stick around in the company because of continuance commitment. Uh, it, what would you feel if you left? You'd probably feel terrified, right? Because what are you going to do for money and, and uh, if there are no other jobs or, um, you know, you, you see this a lot when people have been at a company for a long, long time. And um, so they're, you know, they're embedded there in terms of uh, financially. They've maybe moved up in the company. You see this a lot when people don't have an education that they can fall back on. Sure, maybe you've moved up in one company um, and you're making a lot of money, and, um, but you don't have a degree. Well, what will happen is nobody else would necessarily hire you at that same high, high pay rate, and so you're stuck at the company. We call that continuance commitment, right? You see that a lot, a lot with people who don't have a college degree. 
So um, embeddedness uh, is uh, the uh, person's links that they have to that organization, uh, how embedded they are also in the community and um, what you would have to sacrifice if you left a job. The more embedded a person is, the more likely that they're gonna stay. Now, the, the third level of commitment is called normative commitment. This is the desire on the part of the employee to stay because they are obliged. They feel like they should. You stay because you ought to or should. And what you feel if you leave an organization, um, but you have a high level of normative commitment, you would feel um, guilty, probably. Guilty. Um, so imagine if, if you worked for a, a really ethical, good company, like you're working for, I don't know, Costco, and um, Monsanto comes and offers you a, a $5 an hour rage, raise and you take it, you probably would feel like a pretty crummy person. So if you are an organization that wants to build that normative commitment in your organization, be charitable um, or do something like pay for your employees' school. People will feel indebted to you and you'll, you'll um, increase the normative commitment. That's why organizations do things like, uh, like that. There's other reasons as well, but that's one of the benefits. So all of these types of commitment can be felt in reference to the organization, to the management, to your department, to the department heads, to the, the people that you work with in an organization, to a specific coworker in an organization. All um, can be felt in different degrees and to different, um, you know, to different um, stakeholders and all of them will affect the overall organizational commitment. And, um, this is an exercise that I like to do with uh, uh, when we're together in class, uh, but I'd like you to, you can do this on your own as well, read the negative events and then consider those three scenarios and um, come up with two ways that you would likely respond to these two different, or, or I'm sorry, to these uh, different types of uh, negative situations. And then um, we'll, we'll do this uh, individually. And then after you're done with this, look at the behaviors that you would likely respond to and, and ask yourself, is that normative commitment? Is that continuance commitment? Is that effective commitment? What type of commitment is that? And um, when you're doing this, uh, one thing I will say, please make sure to, to, to respond how you would, behind, would respond, not like how you would like to respond, right? Um, so like, like, let's say with the first one, Oh, no, we'll go to the second one. You have this boring job and you decide you're going to quit. So what kind of, a, what kind of a, a behavior is that? What kind, of, um, what kind of commitment is that if you stay? And then what kind of behavior is that if you leave? We're going to look at those behaviors and we're going to associate them with different withdrawals. So withdrawal behavior is the um, actions performed by the employee that removes themselves from the, uh, from the situation and from the work experience. And employees um, typically do respond to negative work events in one of four different ways. Exit, voice, loyalty, and neglect. So exit is, a, um, is a, an active response. So active meaning you actually have to do something and it's destructive toward the organization because they're removing themselves from the organization. So back to that scenario, I said, if you quit because you're a boring job, that would be exit. Voice is an active response as well, but it's positive, it's constructive. And that's when the employee says, hey, this isn't right. I'm going to change this with my voice. I'm going to speak up to change that status quo. Loyalty is a passive response, so you don't do anything, um, but it, it's also a positive, uh, constructive uh, response. It's passive, constructive response where the employee, they stay at the organization and they stay supportive and they stay in their job, but privately, they're just hoping that things change, right? All right, I'm going to wait this out and hopefully whatever is happening will get better. Now, neglect is also a, a passive response, but it's destructive because uh, neglect is where we're, um, we're staying, but we're just, just not going to do our job. We're just going to uh, sit around and, um, and um, avoid the situation, right? Opala. And then... Um, each of these types of... Uh, of, of withdrawal behavior, uh, we, we, we look at them and we can say, which of the different kinds of uh, employees will exhibit different kinds of uh, withdrawal behaviors? So if an employee scores uh, particularly high in task performance, 
but they have uh, particularly low levels of, um, of organizational commitment, we call those people lone wolves. Now, if they're high on task performance and commitment, these are the people we love, we call them stars. Now, um, we can also have a high, um, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, low task performers, but um, high in commitment, those are citizens, right? They're not great at their job, but they stick around, they're, they're, they're there to stay. Um, the worst kind of employee that you do not wanna have on there, they're not good performers, they're not particularly committed, those are the apathetics. Now, um, when you look at each of these different four types of employees, think how would they respond to the different types of, of situations normally? How would a, um, for example, how would somebody who is, let's say, a star respond to a negative uh, work situation? Would they, would they respond with exit, with, with, with withdrawal, right? Uh, exit withdrawal? Would they respond with, um, with a voice? Would they respond by uh, being loyal or neglect? Well, chances are you would see that those stars would speak up, hopla that they'd speak up, that they'd try to change the situation. Citizens would probably um, be loyal, not try to change anything because they're not particularly good performers. Uh, lone wolves are the kind of people who if something's not great there, they leave, right? They're good performers, but they're not committed. Those are the people that, um, I've always kind of been a lone wolf and, until I have found um, a company that I really care about or a, a, and a job I care about, but very often in my life, I've been a lone wolf. I'm a good performer, but not particularly tied to a company. And apathetics typically respond with, with neg neglect. So um, we want to see high levels of commitment and low levels of withdrawal in an organization, but we don't expect 100% 100 work 100% of the time. I mean, you know, people do exhibit some withdrawals and it's not always bad. One study found that 51% of employees' time in, on average is typically spent working. That's scary to me, should be higher than that. Um, that's saying like 49% of the time, almost half the time they're doing coffee breaks, they're starting late, they're leaving earlier, taking care of personal things. So we do wanna see organizational commitment somewhere eh, closer uh, to the high end and withdrawal behavior closer to the low end. This is, this is not where we want our employees to be. And definitely, you know, the studies say that usually employees are somewhere in there, in the middle, not great. So the types of withdrawal include psychological and uh, physical. Psychological is when they are mentally escaping from the job, but um, they're physically still there, right? So that includes things like daydreaming, socializing, pretending like you're working, uh, moonlighting, which is uh, doing one job while you're, while you're um, at another. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs do this. And cyber loafing, right? Just going online, playing with social media. Um, and then physical withdrawal is when we... We actually physically remove ourselves from the environment. Tardiness, taking long breaks, missing meetings, being absent, and finally quitting. And all of these types of, of withdrawal are, uh, they're correlative, so they are correlated with one another, and we do see that they tend to get worse over time. So it's very important that um, we in our organization, um, that we pay attention to these things, that we give people opportunities for being, um, committed and we pay attention to any withdrawal behaviors that we see. And a couple of other things, people are becoming more diverse. And because of this, we need to make sure that, that people who are often thought of as the outsider, that they still feel levels of uh, high levels of commitment. Uh, they have typically less embeddedness because the communities that they live in aren't their homes, right? They're maybe here only for a little bit of time. And so it's really important that we pay attention to that. Um, and we also know that because the, the employee contract has changed the relationship, that's uh, also changed things. The psychological contracts are not the same as they used to be. People know that because of downsizing and a lot of, um, a lot of uh, really negative things that companies have done, the companies will let you go at the drop of a hat and that'll affect continue its commitment, effective commitment, and even normative commitment. So what do we do as a company to make sure that our employees stay? Well, we pro provide support. Um, we can give, uh, uh, provide bonding activities, mentoring activities, that'll increase the effective commitment. Um, giving a, a, a good, good pay and a good benefits package will um, increase the continuance commitment. Giving training and development opportunities will increase normative commitment. And identifying the root cause of even minor withdrawal 
will um, will help us to make sure that uh, we know what's going on uh, and why and keeping the employees uh, there. So uh, that said, that's the chapter. Thank you. And chapter, I always say chapter, but uh, that's the end of the section and uh, we'll see you in class. Take care.